Thank you for joining us today for Look Before You Speak. And uh, this program uh, is an arts program, but it's more than that. It's, it's uh, a way of helping us elevate our dialogue and talking about art and feeling more comfortable in talking about art. Commercial television um, helps condition us in looking at art and artwork for about one to two seconds. And then you know, on the flip side of that, I think um, we often complain about not finding the right words to talk about art or feeling comfortable in talking about art. So this program flies in the face of that. And we have images up for a long time, and uh, we have people who are very articulate in talking about work. Today, we're really thrilled to have uh, Tracy Pondorf with Living Art here to talk about uh, some pretty exciting pieces of work that have been produced here in Missoula. And thanks for coming on, Tracy. Thanks for having me. And you can tell us a little bit about Living Art. Uh, sure. A little bit about the background about Living Art. Yeah, absolutely. So Living Art of Montana started here in Missoula about 23 years ago. Not many people know it's been existing in this town for that long. Um, we do art and writing workshops for people dealing with illness and loss that encompasses so many people. So we have workshops that are specifically for people that have or have had cancer. But we also have people come into our studio who are dealing with a chronic illness, living with an illness. We have caretakers, we have care providers, we have some family members. So when you talk about all of those groups of people, it's kind of like, you tell me who that doesn't include. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, and the, and the fact that the arts uh, serve as a way of uh, communication and healing. Right. And, uh, uh, provide that platform of communication and you know insight into yes what's inside it's the power of creative expression mm -hmm. absolutely at the heart of it all and what I love about living art in Montana is that most people who come into the studio will make a point to tell me they're not an artist or they're not creative mm -hmm. they've been drawn to it for some reason they've they made it there to a workshop and you know we've been doing it long enough I don't roll my eyes or anything at them <laughs> but we kind of laugh inside because we know it's simply not true mm -hmm. this creativity is we believe it's an inherent resource that everybody has it that's great yeah that's great yeah I think Sometimes uh, there's the mythology of, you know, the arts exist on the east and west coast and in the city, and right. we don't have access to, to the arts. And I think it's really important to realize that the arts exist everywhere, and there is something inherent yeah. in our nature yeah. that uh, craves it. Yes, absolutely. Um, we kind of joke it's nothing new. People have been <laughs> gathering together, making stuff with their hands for, you know, since the beginning of time, really. Sure, sure. And I think we're coming around to maybe studying what's valuable about it, and that's why it's being talked a little bit more mm -hmm. about this. Well, and it's so wonderful that it uh, has this element and aspect of healing. Yes. And... Uh, Anyway, 23 years, that's a long time. How many, how many people have accessed the program, do you know? Oh my gosh, um, yes. I, I mean, if we had to go back since 1993, we, we estimate over 8,000. Mm, wow. We have you know, workshops going year round. Um, so yeah, usually average about 10 to 15 participants at every workshop we do. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you brought some images today and I'm, some actual masks. I brought, yes, yes, we have so, both. <laughs> okay. Where do you want to start? Um, well, I think I could just talk a little bit about why we do mask making um, at Living Art. We started doing it in a program called Cancer, Courage, and Creativity, and we offer that twice a year. Our next session's coming up in March. Um, the mask making technique is valuable for several reasons. First of all, people learn the process of mass making. So learning a new technique, a new process is just something fun. Um, the blank canvas of 
their face is way less intimidating than a big blank white sheet of paper or you know a canvas you might have to decide what you're going to do with so you're you're looking at a familiar canvas mm -hmm. which is really important for people who and hopefully you've seen that yes <laughs> <laughs> yes um, but that's really important for people who may not have done art in years or don't consider them artists mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really not intimidating and then we ask people to decorate their mass and um, a lot of times that's where the self-expression come in mm -hmm. comes in people will choose materials that maybe they uh, are attracted to but really don't know why and finally through the process of writing um, we use the writing prompt I am so the people write through the persona of their mask mm -hmm. so you brought some actual masks in today yes. and maybe we yes. can uh, <laughs> look at some that have been produced. Oh, there they are. Okay, great. Yes, yes. So, um, the one on the left is actually part of a series of four. We do have people who come through um, the mass making workshops and they repeat them because they just love the process. And their expression of their experience really varies from um, season to season, year to year. So that's a summer mass that's part of a a uh, series of season masks that we'll see later. So the four masks were the four seasons. The four masks were the four seasons. That's yes. Beautiful. That's yes. Great. And the other two are also part of a series, a series of elements. So we have um, one participant's water mask and her air or breath mask. Wow. Yeah. Those two were done by the same person? Yes. <clears throat> they were they were done by the same person. So you have people helping facilitate this whole process. Yes. So when people come in cold turkey and they might uh, imagine they're stuck, yeah. <laughs> there's people that can help them with that. Oh, absolutely. We have an amazing pool of facilitators who are artists in our Missoula community and they volunteer their time and their talent and they come and help in our workshops. We always have a staff member hosting so um, there is a very structured format to the workshops. And then what are ways in which um, when these masks are produced, what are ways in which they're shared with the broader audience? Oh wow, well right now we have a collection of 25 or 30 masks. Um, Sometimes people, you know, they, they finish their mask and it was a great experience for them, but they're not, they don't need to keep it. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of artists are the same way. Once they go through the process, the, the value of it for them, um, they keep with them forever and they don't need the final product to sure. stay with them. Sure. So they donate them to us That's for great. safekeeping and they also know it's a way for us to give voice to all of these experiences so that others in the community community can learn about them mm -hmm. and maybe not feel so alone. Um, we did a mass retrospective about a year ago um, at the DDC. We had an exhibit and we're looking at doing another one probably next fall. I'm not sure of the location. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of working on getting that together. We'll do a couple more mass workshops in the coming year so we'll have new mass to show and That's we'll great. keep it it's, going. Uh, when you're talking about people's attachment yeah or like it might seem not so attached to the masks and in reality I I think or I imagine it being a lot like language yes. like language being about a metaphor and that the the metaphor itself is the thing that is eternal yes and uh, it isn't the molecules. Yep, absolutely. So and I think that people that are um, struggling with the illness, mm -hmm. that's really important. That's it's really important and they have a very deep understanding of that. Mm -hmm. um, and also I want to say at Living Art, it's never about the finished product, mm -hmm. we're all about the process. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but you can't ignore or deny that some of these um, pieces that come out of the studio are just amazing. Yeah, sure. sure. Well, let's look at some images that you brought in. Okay. As well. This one, I would love to stay on this image for a little bit. I have some writing about this. It um, oh, was done by a young woman. Um, and I'll just read what she wrote. Um, my mask is an expression of the pain and bitterness I feel concerning my cancer. 
This is a side to my emotions the world does not see. My mask represents my struggle of being a young single woman with this disease. Creating this mask gave me a medium to express the not polite emotions in a fruitful way. The poem was one I wrote after an encounter with a friend who stated I was perfect, but it's too bad I have cancer. My mask is a reminder to keep in touch with all of my emotions, including the shadowy ones. Creating this mask has allowed me to move past my fury at this disease and has opened a new space for acceptance. And her poem, her I am poem is, I am the sweet faced girl you wink at. It's too bad I almost died. I look so young, innocent. There's no way I have cancer. It is just beyond your comprehension. Surgery, pain. The only thing alive was my voice. Three years of yelling, screaming for my life. Screaming louder than my fear. And she actually oh, wrote is. the poem on her yeah. mask, you can see. Yeah, that but, was remarkable. Yeah. That's, that's great. And I brought that one because I just wanted to say we, we're really about embracing the whole of the experience. Mm -hmm. It's not all about being a warrior and fighting. There's days like that. There's also days where you're just tired. <laughs> it's, I, I think it's remarkable that someone who is in such a quagmire. Yeah is able to take a first step and the, it's a creative step but it's about healing yeah and it's about uh sharing with the broader audience so the broader audience can embrace you yes and, yes and uh that's really powerful yeah yeah and also you, you need to get those feelings out sure whether they're positive or not right. and what better way through art right you know and it's totally accepted in our studio let's so. look at another mask here yes that is, uh, it's the men who come through our workshops tend to like to use the natural materials a little more. <laughs> I think it's a Montana thing. So <laughs> this person writes, I am not out of the woods yet, or maybe I never left. Dark as the moss, light as the sun, blue like the water I sit and watch run. I wonder where I will go when I'm done. Back to the woods, that's where I come from, to be one with what is. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And this mask was left with you guys? Yes. Oh. Yes, all of these were, yeah. That's great. And now who, um, just going back to the beginning of this uh, living art. Yeah. Um, how did it get started? How did it get started? I mean, uh, maybe this is a time for another program. I mean, can you briefly talk about that? I can briefly talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was basically about a group of artists, four women, who gathered around another friend who had a terminal diagnosis with cancer. And they just realized that art for each of them was a way to help them get through tough times. And they said, let's get together and do something like start a workshop um, mm -hmm. that cancer courage and creativity workshop I mentioned that was the very first workshop 23 mm -hmm. years ago at living art and it's been going on ever since only in Missoula only yeah <laughs> well um, that is that's an important um, piece of information there it's living art in Montana is the name right now the world headquarters are here in Missoula and it is just us <laughs> yeah. um, it's very unique though, even uh, the Montana Arts Council said as far as an organized um, place with a track record of doing this sort of work, we're it in Montana. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. even on a national level, you just don't see much mm -hmm. of this sort of thing. So it is unique to Missoula right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think uh, 23 years is a long time to um, be plugging away in a therapeutic way. Yes. And. I think there's an element that's really spiritual about this to me too, and it's uh, you know it has to do with how the arts are um, part of the fabric of the entire being. You know, it's physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's mm -hmm. all those things, yes. all at the same time. Yes. And people who might be confronting these really ominous things mm -hmm. may not have even thought of language in a different way or right. painting in a different way. Or right, so right. That's great. Yeah. So we have another image? Oh, this one. Um, yeah, this woman over the course of two years did a series of four masks 
involving all of the four seasons. So I have a little statement from her oh. about the four masks that she wrote after completing them all. As I gazed at my fall mask and my winter mask, I was stopped in my tracks. I looked so scared and so tense in my fall mask. The fear in my expression spoke volumes. Fear, like grief, must run its course. When my cancer returned and the shock and the limbo of uncertainty had faded, I was more accepting about what I was dealing with. An extremely poor prognosis, statistically an 8% chance of living for five years. Somehow, I have been able to move with that, live with that, love with that, push out my old self for a new transformed happier self. I realized much of the unhappiness and stress in my life was not even about cancer. And it has been cancer that has motivated me to make changes that have led to a less stressful, more fulfilling life. What a great uh, reflection. Yeah, and I also have a, a poem about the summer mask. This one, yes. She writes, I am my own summer garden. Out of my cauldron of soil, I can birth beauty in the moment, grasp sheer joy through purples and magentas, drench myself in the tangerine sweet bird songs, alive beyond all expectations, kind of like me. This is an amazing story. This woman started with a stage four diagnosis of melanoma, which is a very severe diagnosis. And that was almost 10 years ago. And she is still, um, she is, oh, that's great. yeah, no evidence of disease. And that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing story. So you have uh, people willing to um, help with this who are visual artists, but also writers. Yes. And, and Missoula is really a rich oh, place for, yes. for uh, <laughs> people who are wordsmiths and yeah. Uh, yeah. All kinds of different writers. Yes, and we are always looking for more people to facilitate our workshops. And right now, we we do ask for volunteers, but it's in our strategic plan to actually start offering these facilitators and artists honorariums in the next year or two. So we're really That's excited great. about that. Yeah. And so you have a permanent location here in Missoula. We have a permanent location, 725 West Alder. It's the warehouse mall. Mm -hmm. That's located be all, between Alder and Spruce Street, right next to the Draft Works, is <laughs> how most people know it. We're up That's another <laughs> aspect of healing. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> okay. It runs the full spectrum, yes. Yeah. Well, what wonderful, wonderful work. And uh, I think anybody who has lost a parent or a sibling or... Uh, um, gone through a, uh, a struggle of some long-term illness of someone who's close to you uh, really can g gain an appreciation just through the things that we've seen today. Yeah. And um, that it's just remarkable that here in Missoula we have access to something that can be so uh, supportive. Yes. And uh, I think many of these challenges can seem overwhelming mm -hmm. and uh, it's so important that people realize they're not alone huge <laughs> and, uh, but also people who are caregivers yes and it's not uh, you know and I think people who have cancer are probably the first ones to say that <laughs> yes <laughs> you know? yes they realize the toll it takes um, and what you said just realizing you're not alone um, one thing I'd like to say is that our workshops we give space for people to talk about what they're going through, but it's never the focus, and it's certainly not a requirement. So it is a little different than mm -hmm. maybe some of the other support groups mm -hmm. that also have value. Mm -hmm. But people will come into our studio and they say, just that underlying feeling that everybody gets it is huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and caregivers, yes, we do get quite a few caregivers. Um, the comment I get from them most of the time is that even though the workshops are two hours, it feels like a huge vacation for them. Oh, cool. It's not like their problems go away, but they're not at the front of their mind for a little bit, mm -hmm. and they can engage in something with their hands, and, and it's well, just and a good I, positive diversion. Sure, <laughs> I think as far as a caregiver, you can get 
bogged down in yes um, medications, the consequences of certain medications, how people are, what what the different therapies are that are available to people, and uh, it's so important to to be supportive of these. Getting out of the quagmire. Yes, so, giving back to yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's needed. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for coming in uh, today. Thank you so and much for that, having uh, me. Commu the community, uh, hopefully, uh, they've learned a lot about living art. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and we'll be in touch with you and can be as supportive as possible to living arts. It's a, it's a very important program. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and check out our program next week. Uh -huh.